Okay, guys, let's jump into the Chapter 5 review here. So this is what you were supposed to have done yesterday. So you're supposed to have this completely done, and now we're going over. So for number one, first thing we had to do was get the 2 off the bottom. So we have to multiply by 2 because it's being divided by 2. Whatever you do to one side, you do to the other. That leaves us with 3x minus 10 is less than 14. Now you add 10 to both sides. That gives you 3x is less than 24. Divide by 3, and you get x is less than 8. And that's your final answer. Notice it didn't say to graph it, so we're done here. Number two, first thing we do is subtract 4 from both sides. x over 3 is greater than 8. Multiply by 3 because you're dividing by 3 on this side. Those cancel. You're left with x is greater than 24. So first two, everybody should have got. Those aren't too, too bad at all. Number three. 5x plus 10, all I did was distribute to 5, 5 times x and 5 times 2 is greater than or equal to 6 minus 2x. Now you have to get your x's on the same side, so I'm going to add 2x over. It gives me 7x plus 10 is greater than or equal to 6. Subtract the 10 over. You get 7x is greater than or equal to negative 4, and divide by 7. And you get x is greater than or equal to negative 4 sevenths. Now, number 4, x is greater than 3 or x is less than negative 3. Really don't know what they wanted to do here other than graphing would be really the only thing I could think of wanting to do in this situation. Uh, if they want you to write this as a compound inequality, this is as good as it gets. We can't do anything with it. But we can practice graphing it. X is greater than 3. It's going to be an open circle because it's a greater than with no equal sign underneath it. And then it's every number greater than 3. So like 4 is greater than 3, that's why you shade this direction. x is less than negative 3, open circle, and shading this direction. It's so all the numbers less than negative 3. That's all you have to do to graph those. And the reason it's like this is because there's only one variable. Remember, we did the other type of graphing, and that's where we had two variables, a y and an x. Okay, number five, this is a compound inequality, and we can write it different. We can have two, y is less than two, y is also greater than negative five, so it would be y is between two and negative five. If we wanted to graph this, be zero and two, open circle, it's all the numbers smaller than 2 and bigger than negative 5. So it's all the numbers in between the two. Okay, number 6, 3y minus 8 is greater than negative 14. I don't know what else that's supposed to be there. Hold on a second. Okay, I fixed it. Now it's 3y minus 8 is greater than negative 14. So we have 3y. I'm going to add 8 to both sides. So 3y is greater than negative 6. Now you divide by 3. You get y is greater than negative 2. On this side, you start by adding 8. That gives you negative 2y is greater than 12. 
how you divide by a negative 2. Anytime you multiply or divide by a negative number, you flip the inequality. This would be y is less than negative 6. Okay, so I'm looking at this and there's an issue here. How can it be greater than negative 2 and less than negative 6? So it needs to be greater than negative 2 and smaller than negative 6, but those are going in opposite directions. And our answer is the intersection or where they combine. Well, they don't combine at all, so your answer would be no solution. That one was a little tricky. Number seven, absolute value of x is greater than 11. It's an greater than, so it's an or question. But it's x is greater than 11. I don't know why I just wrote 16. x is greater than 11. Or x is less than negative 11. And that's it. Number eight, absolute value of x is less than four. That's an and because it's a less than. And so that gives you x is less than four and it's greater than negative four. So that would be your solution. Number nine, have absolute value of 2x plus seven is greater than five. So you start by leaving it exactly the same. And then it's a greater than. So it's an or. And it's 2x plus 7 is less than negative 5. So you flip the sign, make it negative, And then you flip the direction of the inequality. That should still be 2x plus 7. So subtract 7 from both sides, you get 2x is greater than negative 2, divide by 2, x is greater than negative 1, over here you subtract 7, you get 2x is less than negative 12, divide by 2, x is less than negative 6. Oh, that's ugly. It's an or question. And so if we wanted to graph this, we could. And that's what it would look like. All right, number 10. Leave it the same. Negative 3x minus 5 is less than 8. It's less than, so it's going to be an and question. Negative 3x minus 5 is greater than negative 8. Flip the sign and the inequality. Now you just solve. Negative 3x, you're going to add 5 to both sides, is less than 13. Divide by negative 3. You get x because you're dividing by a negative. Flip the inequality is greater than negative 13 over 3. And add 5 to both sides. Get negative 3x is greater than negative 3. Divide by negative 3. Get x is less than 1. Remember, we flip this uh, inequality because we divided by the negative there. And it's an and, so it's going to be x is 
less than 1 and greater than negative 13 over 3. Okay, moving on to number 11. When is the absolute value greater than a negative number? You don't even have to do anything for this one. This is all real numbers. Because it's always going to be greater than a negative. Number 12 is similar. When is the absolute value going to be less than a negative? Never. So it's going to be no solution. Okay. Uh, number 13. Graph each inequality on the coordinate plane. Man, I must have messed this up. Let me fix this. Okay, I fixed it. All right, so the first thing we have to do is realize when it says the coordinate plane, the coordinate plane is ooh, this thing with the x and the y axis. So if it asks you to do it on the coordinate plane, you know that's what it's looking for. All right, solve for x in this case first. So divide by 5. You get x is greater than 3. So you go over to 3. Now, remember we kept plugging a test point in. Now it's a, let's first put the line in. It's just a greater than, so it means a dotted line. Right? Then it's greater than 3, right? So we always did the test point 0, 0. The only time you can't use that test point is if the line is going through 0, 0. So let's plug a 0 in. 5 times 0 is 0. Is 0 greater than 15? No. So if 0 was greater than 15, we would shade this side. Since that's not true, we shade the other side. And that's it. Number 14 is a more conventional one, or a more normal one for us. So let's look at that one. Y is greater than 5X minus 7. So it's already in the format that we need. So now we just have to graph it. So we start by graphing the y-intercept. That's negative 7. So you go down to negative 7, you make a dot. And your slope is 5 over 1, which means you go up 5 from there. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, and over 1. And there you go up 5 again. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, and over 1. Then you draw a line through it. Now because this is just a greater than 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, and over 1. Because this is just a greater than your line is going to be dotted. So you have this dotted line. Then use your test point, 0, 0. So you're plugging a 0 in for y and a 0 in for x. 5 times 0 is 0. You have 0 is greater than negative 7. Is that true? Yes. So, since you used this point and it was true, you shade everything on that side of the line. And that's it. Number 15. Before we can do anything, we're going to get y by itself. 
So let's subtract 2x from both sides. That gives you 3y is less than or equal to negative 2x minus 12. You divide by 3 on both sides. It gives you y is less than or equal to negative 2 thirds x minus 4, because 12 divided by 3 is 4. How straight that was. Wow. Okay, start by going down 4. Make a dot. And from there, you go down 2 and over 3. Is it less than or equal to? Because of the equal sign, I know it's going to be a solid line. Now, I can, you know I couldn't be that good on all these, drawing all these lines. It's kind of hard to draw on here, just so you know. Wow. Okay, now we choose 0, 0. Plug it in. 0 is less than or equal to negative 2 thirds times 0 minus 4. Negative 2 thirds times 0 is just 0. So you get 0 is less than or equal to negative 4. That's not true. So you shade everything below the line. Because 0, 0 is above the line. Okay. Now, some people have reached out to me and said that they're having some issues with some of the question types. I wish you would have told me ahead of time. That way I would go over the homeworks. I think in the next chapter I will definitely go over every homework before I start the next lesson. Now, because of that, it's going to allow you the chance to review your homeworks. So, you should be getting a lot of the homework points right. It's not saying you should come to class with it blank. If you come to class with it blank and you're just copying, it's going to create an issue for you. You're going to fail the test and fail the class, or fail the quarter. Uh, I'm going to try to squeeze in a couple assignments here, and it's just going to be what people were concerned about, the graphing. Okay, so let's start with that Algebra 1, 5.5, day 2. Now, if it's y is less than negative 4, that means we go down to negative 4. I'm actually going to uh, zoom in here. Maybe. Okay, let's try again. Okay, so I'm going to go down to negative 4 and make a dot. And because there's no X or anything, I know that this is just a horizontal line. So it's supposed to be going straight across at negative 4. And it's dotted because there's no equal sign. Then, because it's less than, if I plug 0, 0 in, that would give me 0 is less than negative 4. Is that true? No. So the point zero, 0 is up here, and it gave me a false statement, so I shade below the line. Next one, y is less than 1. Well, basically the same thing, just at 1. And again, my dotted line should be horizontal directly on 1. 
then if I plug 0, 0 in, 0 is less than 1. Is that true? Yes. And that point is here, so since it's true, I shade the bottom side. And that's it. On to three and four. Number three, y is less than negative x plus one. So I start by making a dot at one. Then my slope is negative one. So I go down one, right one, down one, right one. It is just a less than. means I'm going to have a dotted line. You get the point. Now I choose the point zero, zero. Zero is less than negative zero, which is just zero, plus one. So zero is less than one. That is true. So I shade on the same side as 0, 0. Number 4. X is less than or equal to 5. So I'm going to go over to 5. It's a vertical line. It's got an equal sign. So it is solid. If I plug a 0 in, 0, 0. 0 is less than or equal to 5. That's true. So I shade on the same side as 0, 0. That's your answer. Number 5. Negative 4 thirds x plus 2. So I start by going up to 2 and make a dot. Then it's negative 4 thirds, which means I go down 4, 1, 2, 3, 4, and write 3, and make another dot. And I can do the same thing. Go down 4, write 3. Now it's just a less than, so it's going to be a dotted line. And then we have a 0, 0. So 0 is less than negative 4 thirds times 0 is 0 plus 2. 0 is less than 2. That is true. So I shade on the same side as 0, 0. I don't know if you can hear Holly's dog snoring in the background, but it's super loud. <clears throat> Number 6. X is less than or equal to 3. Go over to 3. It's a vertical line, solid, and plug a 0 in. 0 is less than or equal to 3. That's true, so you shade on the same side as 0, 0. And that's it. Now, number 7, 8, 9, and 10 are a little harder because you have to get y by itself first. So first you subtract the 4x from both sides. That's going to give you negative 5y is less than negative 4x plus 10. Then divide by the negative 5. That gives you y is greater than 4 fifths x plus 2. I divided to 4 by the negative 5. Had to flip this because we divided by a negative. Okay, go up to 2. Make a dot. Go up 4. 1, 2, 3, 4, and over 5. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. Make another dot. Go down 4 and left 5.
and it's dotted because it's there's no equal sign. And if we plug zero zero in, it gives us zero is greater than that cancels out two. Zero is not greater than two, so we shade the other side of the line. Number eight. Subtract the x over. It gives us negative 2y is greater than or equal to negative x minus 10. Now you divide by negative 2. It gives you y is greater than or equal to 1 half, this is negative 1 divided by negative 2, x plus 5. Go up to 5, make a dot. Go up 1 over 2, make another dot. Where you gonna go down one and left two? Solid line because of the equal sign. Now I plug zero and zero in. Using zero is greater than or equal to one half times zero zero. Five. Is that true? No. So I can't shade on this side. I have to shade on the other side. That's it. As always, you can pause the video. Uh, number nine. I subtract the 4x over. It gives me negative 3y is less than or equal to negative 4x plus 9. Divide by negative 3. It gives me y is less than or equal to 4 thirds x minus 3. Now I divided by negative, so this should flip to greater than or equal to. Go down 3, make a dot. Go up 4 and over 3, make another dot. Go up 4 and over 3, make another dot. It's got an equal sign, so I know it's a solid line. Now I plug zero, zero in. Zero is greater than or equal to, that cancels out, negative three. Is that true? Yes. So since it's true, I shade on the same side as zero, zero. Last one, number 10. Subtract the x over first. Then negative y is greater than or equal to negative x plus four. Now you have to get rid of the negative 1, or the negative in front of the y. So it flips this back, and now you're just changing signs. Positive x minus 4. Go down 4, make a dot, go up 1 over 1, up 1 over 1. You get the point. Draw a line through the dots. It's going to be solid because it's less than or equal to. And... Now we plug the 0, 0 in. 0 is less than or equal to negative 4. That's not true. So you shade on the other side of the line. All right.